Hey everyone, Brian Matias here. And if there's one thing that photographers can relate to, it is that eternal quest to find the perfect camera bag. Uh, I myself have way more camera bags than I need. And anytime I see a new company come out with a new camera bag, I get very excited. We're all looking for that perfect bag. I don't think it exists, but uh, you know, for each class of photography, whether it's just going out uh, walking around the city for a day with super light gear or going on a day hike or a day shoot out in some natural landscape area. You know, you want to find a good bag that will meet your needs and find uh, that you can store everything you need. Uh, and most importantly, that it's comfortable because if you're wearing a bag and you're taking it around all day filled with however many pounds of camera gear, you don't want to feel any sort of shoulder or back pain. So today, my friends at Mindshift Gear sent me the Backlight 26L. This is one of their newest camera bags, and this is in uh, a color called Greenfield. They also have an option called Charcoal, which is more of a, you know, your traditional gray um, bag. Now, this bag here is billed as um, a day bag. So you're going to use it primarily uh, for a day, maybe two days uh, worth of gear. Uh, I don't know that this necessarily would fit as a like a long haul bag for a week or two trip, although it very well could be uh, based on the gear that you have. So uh, this bag, the very first thing about this bag, that the requirement it meets for me is that it has its primary opening on the back. So this is the Backlight 26L. That is uh, the model number for this. Uh, 26 liters of storage capacity. And again, the main uh, access to this bag is from the back. This is traditionally what Mindshift does. They do have some of their camera bags that open from the front, and those aren't options for me. Uh, I, I use the original Rotation 180 Pro bag, and I love that one because um, it had a rear opening, and then it also had this rotation pouch to hold other stuff. Uh, as much as I liked it, though, uh, I found the need, uh, I, I prefer the kind of all-in-one solution here, just access everything. This reminds me very much of something you'd see with F-Stop gear uh, with their bags where it's just one big lid. So if you open it up, uh, you can see here, uh, it's actually quite a lot of room. So I'm a mirrorless shooter and uh, this gives me plenty of room. Uh, and you can kind of see here, uh, this is what the interior looks like. There's a nice little thing here. You should be able to see it on the camera. Um, basically, so if you're standing up here and the bag is folded on you using the waist belt, um, you're going to lift this, uh, the door, the rear access door. This is a neck strap, so you kind of wrap it around your head and it stays open. So you don't have to worry about it flapping down or holding it open. You basically have two hands full and, uh, and clear for uh, accessing the gear while you're in the field. So this is uh, what you would expect. I already have this configured for... Um, you know, my gear. When it comes uh, by default, it's, you know, your pretty standard configuration, but this right here um, will hold everything that I need. And you can see uh, over here, uh, right there, uh, I actually cannibalized uh, the filter, ne the filter nest, I believe it's called. Um, it's an accessory by Mindshift Gear and it's a filter holder. And so I have this pocket here that holds um, my, all of my necessary filters and it's beautiful, so I don't have to have anything outside. It's there, it takes a uh, little space, and it gives me more space to put other gear. So that is uh, the main access over here. There are two um, uh, uh, zipper pockets here for things relatively flat, like a passport or papers and stuff like that. You really can't put too much more in there because it doesn't have much wiggle room. So if we close this here, um, just, you know, you have to take mine to put the neck strap in. If you want, you could remove the neck strap. It's totally um, removable. It's not permanent. Um, and then just on the sides here. So on either side, there are two really, really generous um, side pockets. You can put uh, a big water bottle in here, or you can use the strap with the pocket to put a tripod. So you can put two or three legs, depending on the size of your tripod and uh, you can just secure it with the top strap. It's on both sides here, so let me just fix that. So you've got that there. Working from the outside, you've got these uh, elastics. If you wanna connect, say, a snowboard or a pickaxe, 
Um, anything that you might want to just kind of have strapped on the outside, uh, these are perfect for. They've got uh, kind of corresponding um, loops on the bottom here. So this is especially if you want to put a handle through. Now, there is a tripod system for the front. And that's, um, you can actually see here, there's a little Velcro pocket, a hidden pocket. And here is um, the top strap that you would connect to the top of your tripod. And then on the bottom here, um, there's another Velcro. So let's just open it up here. It's actually quite ingenious, the way their use of space. And then you've got another um, strap for the bottom, as well as kind of this foot pocket. So you, if it's, a, I wouldn't put my larger uh, Really Right Stuff tripod in here, but my smaller travel one, the feet can go in here really easily. Um, if you're not using it, just, which I don't, I, I typically like to have my um, tripod on one side or the other. It just kind of, I, I feel more balanced that way rather than having it behind me because then I feel like I'm, sometimes I might be pulled back. So um, again, you can kind of hide those straps there. Now, on the very top here, there is this really, there is this really shallow pocket. Um, good for, I wouldn't put my phone in it, but it's good for when I traveled with it just recently, um, I put my little Bose uh, QC20i uh, earbuds in here. So that fits perfectly and gives me easy access. Beyond that though, you know, you can put some microfiber cloths or maybe say a, a really thin pack of SD cards or something like that. Beyond that though, you're not gonna get much use uh, for, for, as far as I can tell. Now, we showed you the back here, so that's where all the gear goes. There's still this one pocket um, on top here and I'm gonna angle it towards you and we'll open it up and you can see um, it's actually quite a, a lot of space um, it has support for a, um, a laptop and a tablet so uh, you can put your laptop here there's a, another pocket here for your tablet and then you can open this up and there is just this tons of space uh, to put that's where your accessories will go or you can fold up um, a light jacket and kind of bunch it in there. Uh, again, this is meant to be a day bag. Uh, I wouldn't see this as something necessarily that you can go uh, long hauls with. Now, one thing that um, I love about Mindshift Gear and uh, their sister company, Think Tank Photo, is um, there's a front pocket here. I didn't show this to you yet. Just kind of like your, a utility pocket, but with all their bags, they also include um, this rain cover. So here's the rain cover in, in the event that it does start raining and you want to protect your bag. Um, it's always with you. Uh, on the front here also, there are these little kind of like molly straps. So if you want to strap things to uh, using these straps here, these little kind of holes, you can. Um, it's just one of those things where uh, by design, it's, it, I think it gets overlooked just because it's a gray design accent. Um, but it is actually functional if you want to kind of connect uh, a carabiner or something like that. You just have more uh, ways to store things like a water bottle hanging off of your bag. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to take a look at the gear that I normally pack in a bag like this for a day trip. Um, one that's centered around taking video in the field because that's what I do. Uh, I've been doing more and more lately. So uh, let's take a look at the gear and then when we're done with that we can go ahead and pack up the gear and see what all of that looks like. This is a good representation of the gear that I take on a day shoot or a multi-day shoot even. And uh, I wanted to show it to you spread out so that uh, you can see it here and then we'll pack it into the Mindshift Backlight 26L bag. So to start, I've got the uh, cameras and lenses here. I've got my primary and backup Sony a7R Mark IIs. When I'm filming, one's the main camera, one's this kind of side or off angle camera. And then I've got uh, some prime lenses that I've been using more and more. Uh, I've got the Zeiss Bodice 85.18, as well as uh, the sister Bodice 25 f2. These are probably my two uh, most used lenses. For the ultra wide, I've actually been using uh, the Tuit, uh, the 12 millimeter f2.8, and that's actually made for a crop sensor Sony email cameras. So it doesn't give me 12 millimeters, but it still gives me a really nice wide angle. Um, and when I use it on the a7R Mark II, uh, the megapixel count drops from 42 down to about 18 megapixels uh, when using APS-C, uh, that APS-C format. And that's more than enough. 18 megapixels is plenty for me. 
Uh, it's just a really nice, uh, small and light ultra wide angle lens. I do hope that we see a wider lens native for the full frame E-mount. Next, we've got um, the Loxia 50 millimeter F2. This is just a simply beautiful uh, lens. I also have the 35 millimeter. Uh, it's a manual focus lens, but it's absolutely stunning. And then I have my telephoto, which is the Sony FE24, or Sony FE7200 rather, F4. Uh, and this is my long lens, you know, uh, just to have something in case I need to reach. And then just for, in case I need to go out and pack very minimal, I'm also taking my Sony RX100 Mark IV. And I use this also because of its ultra high frame rate uh, video capture, which is fantastic. All right, so those are the cameras and lenses. I've started using the Atomos uh, Ninja Assassin. This is a kind of a seven inch reference monitor. It also records 4K. So I'm actually using this to record 4K a lot now. And it's great because I basically have it facing me when I'm on camera so I can see how I'm framed up. It makes uh, self shooting so much easier. These are the batteries for uh, the Ninja Assassin. Behind here, I've got um, the HDMI to mini HDMI cable that connects the Ninja Assassin to the camera and then my shutter cable in case I'm shooting. As far as, as, far as accessories go, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, these are um, batteries. So this is a Think Tank battery pouch that holds four batteries, Sony batteries. This is the more, this is a kind of the primary one. This is the mind shift accessory and it holds four batteries as well as my uh, spare SD cards. So that goes with me everywhere. Over here, these are the Sony uh, NPBX1 or X model batteries. And these are primarily for the RX100 Mark IV as well as my action cams. To power any lights or anything random, especially the wireless mic, which is not pictured here, but that would be here as well because I'm wearing it. Uh, I have two of these uh, eight, bat eight AA battery holders by Think Tank, and I only use um, Antelopes, which are probably the best uh, rechargeable battery on the market. Uh, and they're really, really aggressively priced right now. I just bought like 36 of them from Amazon for about $30, which was ridiculous. So I have um, two packs of those 16 batteries. This is my general accessory pouch. So this has my MacBook Pro, uh, charger, a USB hub. Uh, this is a seven port anchor USB hub, which is fantastic. A bunch of lightning cables for my iPhone and my iPad, uh, an Apple watch charger for uh, my Apple watch when I take it. And so, uh, those all go here, not pictured in this as well are the MacBook pro 13 inch and the iPad air two, which both fit into the backlight. And I'll have that for when we uh, actually do the stuffing. Uh, some sunglasses. I love Maui Jim. Some, this is uh, the, a little accessory that allows me to mount the uh, Ninja Assassin to the Hachu of my A7R2. And then of course, my favorite strap in the world, which is uh, made by Peak Design. And that's their slide, their Summit Edition. And uh, of course, my really right stuff multi-tool. This thing also goes with me everywhere. Uh, you never know when you have to tighten a uh, tripod leg or just tighten something or loosen something. So this is a good, again, representation of what's gonna go into the bag. Um, I wanted to show it to you here. So now let's cut to actually uh, putting this in the bag. All right, we've taken a closer look at the bag and we've taken a look at the gear that we're gonna put in here. So let's actually pack it in, see how it all fits. Uh, I'm gonna start with putting the cameras in. And when I travel, I travel with the cameras, uh, the lenses unmounted. So we have, two camera bags, or two cameras rather, two A7R2s, and I just put them in like this. Now, this particular pocket, I have it uh, set so that it'll accept a camera with my 70 to 200 millimeter lens mounted. Uh, that's the longest possible lens that I have that I take with me, so I wanna make sure that uh, in kind of a quick situation, I can just put it in, mount it, I don't have to uh, take the lens off. So because it'll fit with the 7200, I know that every other lens that's smaller will fit here as well. So right now that holds both of the cameras. Uh, then I'm gonna take the 7200, put that in here. Okay, so that fits here. Next, we'll take a couple of the bodice lenses. So I'll take the 85 here. Actually, I usually flip the lens hood on, just so that it, um, 
it stays flush below the top of the surface. I'll take the other um, lattice lens, put that here. And so it has a really nice snug fit. Um, nothing's really gonna shift around. Then I'm gonna take the uh, little, the Loxy lens, put that here. And then this is the Tuit lens. I'll put that sitting up. That'll fit really nicely there. So I've got uh, pretty much the core cameras and lenses in here. Next thing I'm gonna do is take um, my Atomos Ninja Assassin. And so I have a pocket here that I sized I love that it's narrow, so it fits perfectly over here. Um, and that was made for that. And just to re remind you, there's my little filter pouch here that has all of my filters, my step-up rings, um, and that's all I need for these lenses. I have the correct step-up rings for the thread sizes of, of all four of these lenses, or all five of these lenses, rather. Now let's put the RX100 Mark IV in. There's this little pocket here that I've got. Um, adds a nice sort of kind of snug feel to that, so that's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, just kind of makes use of uh, all the space here. And so we've got everything in here. Uh, sometimes I'll just throw in random accessories just because uh, I want to have access to them like uh, the, the shutter cable. So I'll put the shutter cable just somewhere here. Or actually you can even put it if you want in the, uh, the pocket here. On, you, just, you might feel it on your back, but it's fine uh, to go over there. So we've got pretty much everything here uh, for this back pocket. Now let's, uh, we'll flip it around and start putting uh, the other accessories into the front pocket. Now with the bag flipped, we can open up the top pocket here. Um, and what you'll want to do uh, to open the pocket up fully is just remove or declasp these two straps. So you have kind of full access here. Now, if we fold this back a little bit, you can see the laptop pouch and the tablet pouch. So I'm gonna take my laptop. That fits in here more than enough space. I'm pretty sure it goes up to, it'll support a 15 inch laptop. So you have, again, tons of space there. Uh, and then I'm gonna take my iPad Air 2. Uh, I have it in a Logitech keyboard case. Put that in here, fits in perfectly, that's good. Um, and then now we start putting uh, the pouches. So I'm a big fan of pouches. I start with the accessory pouch here. And I, I like this one because it's tall, but thin. It doesn't, it's not really fat, it doesn't stick out. So that goes in first and I just kind of put that all the way at the bottom here. Uh, and then I just start putting basically other stuff. So my battery packs and SD card pouches, those go down here at the bottom. Um, got the two AA battery pack holders. Those kind of go here. And then we'll put the uh, other battery pouch. And then finally, just the last few things, which um, I keep my, my sunglasses at the top. So just the HDMI cable for video, uh, two batteries, my multi-tool, which I will put right here into this pocket, and then my sunglasses. So I can then zip it up. Like that. And there we go. So now I can just get the straps clasped down, and we've got the bag fully packed with everything. Uh, you can see here, uh, you still have access to both of the side pockets. Uh, and you have access to the rear. Uh, nothing crammed, everything fit perfectly. Uh, the bag itself uh, weighs what you would expect for all the gear. Basically now stores everything that I need for a solid day of shooting where I'd be coming home uh, at the end of the day.